Hi, I'm Brian Mendoza, Senior Architect here at CA Technologies. Today we're going to talk about an innovation introduced in CA Application Performance Management 10.5 called the Experience Card. The Experience Card, Experience View, is produced by a new analytics engine called Assisted Triage. Assisted Triage takes advantage of all the various types of data collected and produced by APM. Metric data, alerts, differential analysis, and transaction traces. Unlike any other feature in APM, the experience view interprets all this data from the point of view of the end user. To understand how this works, we need to look at the Team Center view called the map or app map. Team Center creates the app map using transaction trace data. As it parses the information from the trace, it looks for certain types of components. The key to the data is finding front ends and back ends. Front ends can include business transactions or BTs documented in CEM. Backends can be databases or other endpoints such as web services outside the system. The app map engine looks to identify the endpoints and components between. The interpreter identifies various types of components and places them on the map. In this example, we see the transaction trace for editing an account in the TickChange application. In this case, this is a recognized business transaction captured by CEM. As the transaction trace data is parsed, Team Center recognizes servlets, web service calls, and other types of components. When the app map is rendered, Team Center overlays the map with alert related data. Each component with related alerts will depict the state of the alert based on the chosen time period. Notice the links between nodes in the map. Some have dashed lines and others are solid. A solid line indicates that a back end component exists on the connection. Solid lines that are green, yellow, or red indicate there are alerts monitoring those components. In this example, the action servlet has a link to a web service related to something outside the TickChange application. The solid line represents the web service call, so that is what is being monitored. Dash lines represent links between two components within the application, and there is no external backend. The link from action servlet to the JSP servlet service represents a call from one TickChange component to another. For the purpose of assisted triage in the experience card, the most important components are the business transactions at the front end. You may have response time alerts monitoring these transactions. Downstream issues that don't cause failure or response time threshold violations are invisible to the end user. From that point of view, the application is behaving as expected. Notice that in this example, the alerts for the transaction level are showing green, while downstream components are showing yellow. From the user's point of view, everything is okay. Such a situation could trigger what is called an anomaly. These represent situations that are significant to the application specialist, but not to the end user. However, when you see warning or danger alerts at the business transaction level, this is when a problem could be reported. As we look closely at an experience card and what things mean, it is important to remember the time factor in the discussion. Just like the map and dashboard views, the experience view is governed by the selected time range. The view will always default to the most recent 24 hours, so that amount of data is being considered. And since the setting is for live mode, the values will change as time passes. As this graphic shows, you can select shorter live time ranges or a custom one. Custom ranges imply historical time periods. Always adjust your analyst's eye to the selected time range. When you begin to analyze a specific problem or anomaly, the view will change to historic mode for a selected time range. You can always adjust the time range to suit your analytical needs. Another factor that affects the reporting about an experience card is the way it is configured. Consider this example. In this case, I am creating an experience card that is based on the APM R10 components universe. That narrows the number of experiences that I'll consider. I narrow the list even more by adding a filter based on the location attribute of those components. In this case, I am looking only at the components based in the New York data center. Finally, I select how they will be organized when I review them. In this case, I selected business service, but every populated attribute of these components can be used. This grouping is used to show the experience subcards. It also can be changed in the view itself. What I pick here is the default attribute. Before we go on, let's consider what the assisted triage engine takes into consideration. In particular, assisted triage looks at four types of events, error events, differential analysis, or DA, alerts, and stall events. With DA, errors and stalls, there are built-in metrics beyond simple alerts that are monitored. For example, when the differential analysis variance intensity rises, the DA alert is triggered. The same is true for stalls and errors. Okay, now you have a bit of background about what is being interpreted. 
and the inputs that go into the assisted triage engine. Let's look at what comes out of it, that is, the problems and anomalies that are shown on the experience cards. The health score is calculated as a percentage of good transactions versus poor ones. In this example, it shows there are approximately 13,000 poor transactions out of 82,000. That means there are about 69,000 good ones, which represents 84% of the total. Thus, the health score is 84. This begs the question, what is a poor transaction? To understand poor transactions, we look at the transaction buckets at the bottom of the card. There are five buckets, two of which are flagged with a red color. But for a moment, consider the others. The bucket labeled 1S indicates transactions that required no more than one second to complete and did not involve an alert violation or error event. The second bucket is for transactions that completed in two seconds or less without an alert violation or error event. Transactions in the third bucket took longer than two seconds to complete but still did not involve an alert violation. Collectively, these represent the good transactions. The other two buckets are slow and fail. A transaction will be considered slow if it has a spike in the DA variance intensity or it gets an average response time alert. Remember, we are considering only the transaction entry point, the point where the user interacts with the system. In a classic web-based application, this would be a URL accessed in a browser. Failed transactions exclude the slow ones, but include ones that experience elevated stalls or some type of error event. With assisted triage, we say that the inputs are experiences and the outputs are problems and anomalies. Remember that anomalies are issues that need to be tracked down, but have not yet directly affected the user's experience. Problems, on the other hand, are affecting the user's experience. What can you do when these start popping up? Consider this example. Here is a particular business transaction for the TickChange application that is reporting two problems. At the bottom left is an icon that lets you open the analysis notebook for this transaction. Now you can see a map of just the components of this business transaction, and you have a list on the right of the problems that have been found. At the point I access the analysis notebook, the map is frozen into a historic view. All the alerts I see in the map are relevant to that moment in time as they are contributing to the problems. Now I can click on a problem to discover more information about it. Bringing the focus to a specific problem shows the information related to the story the engine is reporting. In this case, you see that the culprit application producing the problem is TickChange Web. The problem has been persisting for 55 minutes and has impacted two transactions. It detects that the possible component culprit is an HTTP servlet, which is one of the components in the map. Since it impacts a BT shop view product, it is categorized as a problem and not as an anomaly. If I click on the culprit in the problem list, it shows me which alerts were triggered on that component. In this case, it is a stall count violation. Now that I know which transaction is problematic and which kind of problem is happening, I can investigate further. For example, I can look at transaction traces for more detail about which specific component is in difficulty. When it is time to hand the analysis over to an application specialist, I use the share URL link to create a bookmark. Another analyst can use that bookmark to access exactly the same view I have been investigating. There is only one final note about an experience card to consider. Notice that in the upper right there is an alert indicator. This alert is not so much a product of the assisted triage engine as much as it is simply a report of the current state of the transaction. If all alerts related to the BT are green for the given time range, the indicator will be green. If any alert is in warning or danger state, then this indicator will be also. To help you remember what the various buckets and indicators mean, hover your mouse over it and the tooltip will provide a brief explanation. Thank you for watching this video about understanding CAAPM Experience Card. For more CA application performance management videos, subscribe to the CAAPM channel on YouTube. For more detailed information on CA application performance management, click the information bubble in the top right corner to load the product page. From there, you can go to product documentation, visit CA communities, or see the learning path.